Uh, today's webinar is creating accessible data visualizations using SAS Graphics Accelerator. And I want to thank everyone for joining. Thank you so much. Uh, my name is Ed Summers. I'm Director of Accessibility at SAS, and my co-pilot today is Lisa Morton. Hi, everyone. Welcome. We're just tickled that you've joined us here today. Um, I'm the Project Manager for the Accessibility Team at SAS, and um, happy to be here, Ed. Thanks. All righty, thank you. So as you've joined the webinar, uh, you've been muted automatically by uh, by Zoom because we have so many participants that are joining. And uh, for the most part, everyone will be muted today uh, with the exception of questions. Uh, we will pause a few times during the webinar for questions. And uh, the way that you will at that time uh, uh, you know, indicate that you have a question is by raising your hand in Zoom. So no need to do it now um, because we're going to plow through the first segment of the webinar. But just so you know, on the participants panel, whether you're on the, the um, a PC or if you're in an iOS app uh, for Zoom, on the participants panel, typically at the bottom, uh, there's a little button that says raise hand or lower hand. And that is how you can indicate uh, for Lisa that you have a question and she will uh, methodically unmute you one at a time so that we can take a few questions uh, at the appropriate time. So uh, stay tuned uh, for the next uh, or the first question uh, period. And I also wanted to just mention here that on the page right now on my screen, you can hopefully see the SAS Disability Support Center page. Uh, this is a relatively new page. We're adding content to support people with disabilities who need to make better decisions using data or learn, if you're a student, learn how to make better decisions using data uh, through uh, quantitative analysis. So if you go to support.sas.com slash accessibility, uh, you can get to that page directly, or you can open your favorite search engine and type in SAS, that's S-A-S, -S, SAS Disability Support Center, should get you directly to the page as well. Okay, the goal of the webinar today is to show you how to import data into SAS Graphics Accelerator, uh, how to create data visualizations in a variety of ways, uh, and then uh, how to, of course, explore those data visualizations and understand them using non-visual methods, and how to share those data visualizations with a colleague or a professor or a teacher, or perhaps a student. So that's what we're gonna do. That's, that's the literal uh, goal of the webinar, but the, the broader, uh, more interesting goal is that using these methods, these features, a person who has a visual impairment or blindness like me can very quickly understand data and use the a, a, an accessible form of data visualization, which we use sound, to quickly understand data and collaborate and also compete uh, in the mainstream uh, classroom and the mainstream workforce. So let's jump right in and get started. SAS Graphics Accelerator is a free extension for Google Chrome. Google Chrome extensions are a lot like apps for your mobile phone, for your iOS device, for example. There is a, a Chrome store where you can go uh, load uh, extensions. And once you install them, you're actually installing them locally on your system. And uh, they can reside completely locally or they can also uh, refer to resources external. SAS Graphics Accelerator is completely locally, local to your system once you install it uh, so that you can uh, unplug from the internet and continue to use it to analyze data. So the first thing I wanna show you is after you install SAS Graphics Accelerator, uh, you can access its features and functions up in the toolbar in the, crop of, in the top of Chrome. Well, let me turn on JAWS. Okay, and now. And let me slow this down. That was one thing I needed to do. We'll see how that goes for us. Now I'm just gonna press Alt here in Chrome. Alert, they open the join the meeting. 
And once I press Alt, that should move my focus to uh, my toolbar up top. And now I'll press left over a few times. Add button menu. Extensions. Open Acrobat has access to the site button menu. And then I'm just going across the icons that uh, represent the extensions I've installed into my Chrome. SAS Graphics Accelerator has access to the site button menu. Okay. There's SAS Graphics Accelerator. I'll press spacebar. Space dialog. Up button. That brings up a pop-up. You should be able to see this over in the right. Add the iPhone left parent to right parent that joins the meeting. Uh, the right corner of the screen. So uh, there is no Hello, way. Kathy has left the meeting. Let me just pause for a second. So Hello, Kathy has joined the meeting. there is no way for me to share my JAWS audio for our participants who are blind to, to be able to follow along and not Hello, receive Kim has joined the meeting. those messages that you're hearing. So Hello, Kim has joined the meeting. Lisa, would you be kind enough to Hello, iPad has joined the meeting. go ahead and lock the meeting? Hello, Williams has joined the meeting. Uh, and that will enable us to get through this and be able to hear my screen, hopefully. Hello, Campbell raised hand. Roger that. Hello, Campbell raised hand. Thank you. Mm-hmm. All right. Hey, options button. So here on the pop-up in the top right corner of the screen, uh, I'll just press tab to go through the button. Resources button. About button. Extract tables from this page button. Laboratory button. Okay. And it, this laboratory button, I believe, might be the second button from the top. I'll just press enter. Enter. Untitled dash Google Chrome. Laboratory colon dash graphics accelerator dash Google Chrome. Heading level one laboratory students. Okay, so this opens the laboratory page. I'll press H in JAWS. Wrapping the top, laboratory heading level one. Okay, and there's one heading on this page. It's a heading level one, and it's the laboratory. And this is how I know that I'm on the laboratory page, uh, just by pressing H in order to confirm that. Now, let me just press tab here. Laboratory, colon, task, graphics, accelerator, dash, Google Chrome, create table button. And I've got a button to create a table. That's just a manually creating a quick table. Import table button. I have a button here that allows me to import a table of data from a variety of sources. Uh, we can import data from uh, comma-separated values files, CSV files, tab-separated values files, uh, Excel spreadsheets, Excel files, XLSX files. And then let's let's keep moving here. Manage tables button. And then manage tables. So what you're seeing in the lab, and we'll see this in a minute, are the list of tables that I have uh, imported. Uh, actually, what you see are two sample tables, because I haven't imported any data yet. Uh, and we'll look at those, but... Once I've uh, added some tables, uh, I, I, want, I, might build, I might need to delete them. So the Manage Tables button allows me to do that. So let me just keep going down with my virtual PC cursor. List of two items. Visited link students, left parent, sample data, right parent. Okay, now I'm into the list of tables, which is the main part of the, of the laboratory page. I've got one called Students. Visited link cards, left parent, sample data, right parent. And I got one called Cars. So I'm going to just press Shift I. Visited link students, left parent, sample data, right parent. Okay, and I'm going to open the students sample data table. I'll press return. Enter. Table colon task graphics accelerator dash Google Chrome. Create graphs button showing rows 19 of 19. Page has one region, one heading and nine links. Link wait. Can wait. Okay, great. Now, Tony Erickson has left the meeting. Pretty much whenever I open a page, uh, since I'm a JAWS user, I just press H. Wrapping the top table colon student alert. Jacqueline Tippin has left the meeting. And press H again. Wrapping the top table colon student left parent sample data right parent heading level one. There we go. So, uh, th this is the, t it says table colon students, and that's how I know I'm on the table page. We call this the table page because it shows the data in your table. All right, so now let's explore this page a little bit. Return to laboratory button. The first button is return to laboratory. That'll take us right back to where we came from. Download button. I can download a table in a variety of formats. Table properties button. I can change some of the table properties, such as the name, for example. Remove all filters button available. If I filtered the data in the table, I can remove those to all the filters, or I can also remove them one by one. Create graph button. I can create a graph manually. Create map button. Uh, if my data has geospatial data in it, then I can create a, gra a, a map from that data as well. Manage graphs and maps button. And then, of course, if I, once I've created uh, graphs and maps, I can delete them. List of one items. Link cards are showing by name, group by sex. All right. And I've previously created uh, uh, one uh, graph here that uh, shows up in the list. So I'll just press T. Table with five columns and 21 rows. Showing rows 19 of 19. Column one, row one. Link. Okay, so that takes me to the table. And my focus, my virtual PC cursor now, should be in the top left uh, cell of the table. So now I'm going to use my JAWS reading commands just to go uh, across the table from left to right. And so the way that, uh, the easiest way to navigate, or the, I guess the most direct way to navigate tables using JAWS is to hold down Control and Alt and then use your arrow key. So I'll just hold down Control Alt and press right arrow. Link six, column two. Let me go back to the first column. Link name, column one. Okay. 
So the name of the variable represented in the first column is name. And now I'll just move across the top row and we'll hear each of the names of each of the variables. Link text column two. Link age column three. Link height column four. Link weight column five. Okay. End the row. All right, that's end of the row. Okay, so we've got five variables or five columns uh, represented in this table. So let me go back. Hi. And I'll just go back to the beginning. Link age, link text, column name, column one, beginning of row. Now let's go to the first cell in the second row of the table. Character button, row two. The, the second row of the table shows us meta information about each column or and the variable represented in the column. Um, and one of the most important things uh, that we can learn about that is the type. SAS Average Accelerator supports the ability to, uh, to type your variables or to assign them a type, uh, which enables you to perform certain types of analysis. Since this is a character variable, uh, name, the name of each student, that's not something we would perform addition and subtraction on. We wouldn't do math on Hello, a character variable. Left the meeting. Uh, but if it were a number, that we might do that. Right? So let's just go across this second row. Text, character, categorical button, column two. So what you're hearing is the, the column header, which is the variable name, and then the, uh, the variable type. Keep going. Age, number, categorical button, column three. So age is a number and categorical. Height, number, button, column four. Height is just a number. Weight, number, button, column five. And uh, height is, is a number as well. Now, underneath this, starting in the third Age, row of the table, you can see that there's Alert, data. There. And what I'm going to do instead, Alert, though, I'm just going to go up Alert, and, and I'm going to go up and Alert, row one. click the weight link, which is in the first row of the table. And when I do that, let's see. End the row. Yep, I'm going to click wait. Space, untitled, dash Google Chrome, variable, colon, dash graphics, accelerator, dash Google Chrome, distribution, page has one region, set histogram. Now this opens what we call the variable page. I'll just press, uh, let me press uh, one. No more headings at level one. Variable, colon, with heading level one. Okay, so the heading level one is variable, Alert, Sam, dash, colon, variable, colon, and then wait. So this is a page that gives us a lot of information about this particular variable. I'll just work through this page with by pressing H. Summary heading level two. There's a summary section. Comparison heading level two. There's a comparison section. And within the comparison section, I can compare this variable against the rest of the variables in the table. So if I press H. Name heading level three link. So I can compare it against name. Sex heading level three link. Age visited heading alert one eight four eight seven zero. Height visited heading level three link. And then I'll loop back around at this alert, point. the top variable colon with heading level one. Alert, tail has left the meeting. I'll, I'll loop back around here to the H1 at the top. Now, let's go, Alert, let's, left the meeting. let's look at a quick summary, though, of this data. Summary heading level two. Of this variable. Table with alert, Mary Stores has left the, summary, type, categorical, row two, type, row one, number, column two. Okay, the type is number. Categorical, no, row two. And I'm just walking down the summary table on the left-hand side of the page here. You'll be able to hear each one. Series, no, row three, total count of values, 19, row four, number of missing values, zero, row five, minimum value, 50.5, row alert, genie has left the meeting. First quartile, 84, row seven, median, 99.5, row eight. Third quartile, 112.5, row 9. Maximum value, 150, row 10. Mean, 100, row 11. Standard deviation, 22.8, row 12. Sum, 1,900.5, row 13. Distribution, link histogram, alert, Angie has left the meeting. Okay, so what you heard there is a lot of, uh, some summary statistics about this variable. And since it's a number, um, we can do things like the average and the median and other types of alert, uh, numerical analysis. Alert, Lisa John. Now, what you also have here. Distribution, alert, Angie has left the meeting. Distribution link histogram showing Willard Kathy has joined a link right here that says that has automatically generated and when it's, and it basically says it's a histogram of this particular variable. So I'm going to click Alert, that. Left the meeting. I'll just click that link. Space, untitled, dash, Google Chrome, 51, 51. All right. Now this brings up a data visualization. You can probably see it on the screen uh, Alert, if, you, if you're sighted. Uh, but the other thing that you can do is you can explore it using your keyboard and sound. So I'm going to play this histogram from left to right. Now, if you were able to hear what I'm hearing, you would hear it in stereo. And it would start on the left and move to the right uh, as, it, as it plays. Uh, you guys don't have the ability to, to hear that if you're listening live. The recording should, have, should support stereo. Uh, it might support stereo. We'll see if it comes out okay. But let's play this again from left to right. All right, there's a lot going on there. 
So let's go back all the way. I'm going to press, I'm, I'm doing that by the way by pressing the right arrow. And I'm in scan mode. So let me press V. V explore mode. To go to explore mode. I'll press control left arrow. Back 51. To go all the way back to the, top, to the, to the left hand side. Now, since I'm in explore mode rather than scan mode, uh, here in the graph view, I can explore each point individually. So I'll press right arrow. 60, zero. Okay, and that bin, the bin that starts with 60, there's zero points. 71. Okay, that's the bin that starts with 70, and there's one data point there. 85. And the bin, is, so this is, this is, by the way, this, is, this is the weight of students we're looking at here. So Hello, the bin that starts at 80 has five, and we can keep going. 93, 102, 110, 4, 121, 131, 140, 0, 151. All right, and there we go. Now we're at the end. So what you're hearing, the sounds you're hearing, the tones uh, represent the height of the individual bars within each bin on the y-axis. So the bottom of the y-axis is represented by low points and the top of the y-axis is represented by high high tones, right? So, and then if, if there's a missing data point, which I think there was one right back here. 140, zero. All right, that thud. Space 140, zero. Space 140, zero. Uh, that you're hearing there, that's the missing data point sound. All right, so let's turn off the virtual PC cursor. At virtual PC cursor. And let's Hello. go down Hello. Hello. to see the text description Hello. of this graph. Histogram showing weight heading level one. Okay, the title of it is histogram showing weight. And I'll just read through this really quick with my virtual PC cursor. Type colon histogram. Title colon histogram showing weight. X axis colon label is quote weight quote. Ranges from 50 to 150. Type is continuous. Scale is linear. Y axis colon label is quote frequency quote. Ranges from 0 to 5. Type is continuous. Scale is linear. This histogram contains 11 pins. Visited link view, download, and share a visualization of this histogram. The visualization has been optimized for users with low vision. All right. So let's go that we heard we can view, download, and share a, a visualization of the histogram. This histogram contains 11 pins. Graph view colon graphics accelerator dash Google Chrome. Visited link view, download, and share a visualization of this histogram. So I'll just do that. Space, visualization view colon graphics accelerator dash Google Chrome. Histogram showing with graphics page has one region and three histogram. So now you can see on the screen there is a a, a graph. Alert, iPhone has left the meeting. And I'll just uh, use virtual alert. Maybe scroll up if I can. Alert. So that you can see this. And uh, and this graph is appropriate for sharing with sighted people. Uh, it will look perfectly normal to sighted people, a, a sighted professor or a sighted uh, teacher, general education teacher. So. Download graph with HTML button. Uh, we can also download this graph, right? And when I click uh, download. Alert, download, alert, download, complete colon histogram showing with .html. Press shift plus F6 to cycle to the download star area. Download item. Okay, now. Full underline data histogram showing with .html. One of seven. I have a, a HTML file in my downloads folder that I can copy and paste into an email or share it however I like. Okay. Let's go back. Use virtual PC cursor off. Back to Google Alert, Chrome. Chastina, use virtual PC cursor on. And I'll just close this one. Control W, variable colon task graphics accelerator dash Google Chrome. And that's the variable page, so I'll close that. Control W, table colon task graphics accelerator. And now I'm back at the table page. I'll press H just to verify that. Wrapping the top, table colon students left parent sample data right parent heading level one. Great. So that's the kind of the quick introduction to exploring uh, a table of data interactively using SAS Graphics Accelerator. There's a lot more to it, obviously, but, but that hits all the high points. Now, let's go back to the very beginning and let's go import a data table uh, within the laboratory. Table colon SAS Graphics Accelerator dash Google Chrome. Return to laboratory button. So I'll just return to the laboratory Space, here. Laboratory colon SAS Graphics Accelerator dash Google Chrome. Laboratory colon. So now I'll press H just to verify. Laboratory heading level one. Great. I'll press tab. Create table button. Press tab again. Import table button. Okay, now I'm on the import table button. Enter. Press oh, dialog. File name colon edit combo alt plus n. Item two. Enter name split button. Now I can explore my file system. Sales.xlsx101. For uh, files that, that are of the appropriate type. And I've got one right here. It's called sales.xlsx. It's an Excel spreadsheet. And I'll just hit return. Enter. Laboratory colon task graphics accelerator dash Google Chrome available. Support table button. Laboratory colon task graphics accelerator. Page has one region, two headings, and three links. Prepare table heading level one. Prepare table. Now, we're in the prepare table uh, page. I'll press one. No more headings at level one. No prior headings at level one. Well. Sales dash sales heading level two. Prepare table heading level one. There we go. The prepare table page. And each heading level two on this page uh, is a separate table. So if there are multiple worksheets, in your workbook in Excel, then you'll get a separate H2, heading level two, on this page for each one. 
and uh, there's a, another a number of ways oh, that, left the meeting. that you might uh, import um, one more one or more tables at a time. So let's go to the H2. Sales dash sales heading level two. Wrapping the top. Prepare table heading sales dash sales heading level two. Great. And now let's tab. Prepare table dash Google Chrome. Table name colon star edit required. Sales dash sales. I'm going to change that just to sales because it came through with both the file name and the worksheet name there. Press tab. Sales. Prepare table dash Google Chrome. First row contains column header checkbox checked. Okay. And we have some heuristics here um, regarding the column headings within the table. These are just help you. Uh, these are filled out by default, and they just help you figure out if there are uh, if your table of data contains column headings and row headings. So I'll just tab through these. First column contains row header checkbox not checked. Showing rows for 395 table column one row six region column one row six show full table button. So there's 395 rows of data in this table. I'll just keep pressing tab. Save the laboratory button. And I'll press save the laboratory. Space, table colon graphics accelerator dash Google Chrome. Save the laboratory button. Showing rows 25 or 395. Page has one region, one heading, and ten links. Table colon. This brings us to the table page. We've already seen it. I'll just press H. Table colon, sales heading level one. Yep. Table colon. That tells me I'm on the table page. And this is just like the table page that represented the student data we saw a few minutes ago. And just so you see how this ties together, and I'll just press tab once. Return to the laboratory button. Just to return to the laboratory so you can see how this ties Space, together. Laboratory colon, task graphics accelerator dash Google Chrome. So now I'm on the laboratory page. Wrapping the top, laboratory heading level. Press H to get there. I'll press L to go to the list of tables. List of three items. Now I have two sample tables here, students and automobiles. And then I have a third table, uh, which is what we just imported. So let me press I. Visited link students left parent sample data right parent. Visited link card left parent sample data right parent. And I last time. Visited link sales. There's sales. That's what we just imported. So I'll just hit return. Enter. Table colon task graphics accelerator dash Google Chrome. Manage graphs and maps buttons. Okay, so now I'm on the table page for sales. Wrapping the top. Table colon sales heading level one. Now let's go look at this table. Press T. Table with seven columns and 28 rows. Showing rows 25 or 395. Column one, row one, link region. Okay, so there's a lot of rows here, and this is a great example of, of a, a, a real-world data set. If you were managing a business, let's say you were managing, um, you were a vendor uh, for one of the blind, blind entrepreneur programs, or perhaps you were uh, a vendor in the Randolph Shepard program, uh, you would need to analyze and keep track of data like this as a business operator. So let's look at this table. Uh, Control, Alt, and arrow keys allows me to navigate tables and jobs. Character, category, link, region, row one. So, and I'm in the top left. Uh, uh, the left, left the meeting. Top left corner of the table in the first row, and the first column is region, the label. I'll just go from left to right. Link product, column two. Link subsidiary, column three. Link number of stores, column four. Link sales, column five. Link inventory, column six. Link returns, column seven. End the row. Okay, and that's the end of the row. Now, as we saw earlier, uh, the second row. Character categorical button. I'm now I'm in in the second row, first cell, all the way on the left. Uh, this represents the type of each variable. So let's look at the type of each one. Link region character categorical button row two. Okay, so region is good char character and categorical. Product character categorical button column two. Subsidiary character categorical button column three. Number of stores number categorical button column four. Okay, number of stores is is a number. Sales currency button column five. Ah, here's a new type. This is currency. Uh, so this is. Um, uh, money is what currency means. Inventory, currency button, column six. Returns, currency button, column seven. Okay. All right. So now we understand what's in the table. Now we could go off and look at the data in the table, but when you have 395 rows of data, that uh, exploring that with a screen reader using this method breaks down pretty quick, and that's why we created SAS Graphics Accelerator. So you could do it a lot faster. Uh, as a business operator, I might be interested in sales. Let's go back up to the first row and find the sales Column. Link returns, row one. Link inventory, column six. Link sales, column five. Here we are, sales. Now, if you hear that, that's a link. And just like we could with students, any table that you load in, uh, the, Alert. First, Alert. the first row of, uh, in the table should contain the column heading names, the variable names, and they should all be links. So let's press spacebar. Space, untitled, dash Google Chrome, variable colon, dash graphics, accelerator, dash Google Chrome, third quartile, page has one region, my variable colon. And I'll press one. Variable colon, sales heading level one. Yes, just to confirm, variable colon means I'm on the variable page, and this is the variable page that represents sales. So let's go down, let's press H. Summary heading level two. To the summary section, and then let's look at a summary table. Table with two columns and 14 rows. A summary, type, currency. Okay, the type is currency, and let's go down. Categorical, no, row two. Series, no, row three. Total count of values, 395, row four. Number of missing values, zero, row five. Minimum value, $325, row six. First quartile, $15,300 alert. Sharon Little has left the meeting. 
Median, dollar thirty eight thousand nine hundred twelve, row eight. Third quartile, dollar one hundred eight thousand nine hundred thirty six, row nine. Maximum value, dollar one million two hundred ninety eight thousand seven hundred seventeen, row ten. Mean, dollar eighty five thousand seven hundred, row eleven. Standard deviation, dollar one hundred twenty nine thousand one hundred seven, row twelve. Sum, dollar thirty three million eight hundred fifty one thousand five hundred sixty. Okay, so you get the idea. This is some you know basic statistical analysis, five number summary, and so on a few more things uh, regarding this variable, which is. I think one of the things you, that we're learning in about seventh grade or so these days, uh, five number summary. So uh, now let's keep going over to the comparison section. Comparison heading level two. All right, this is where uh, in the comparison section, there's a table and we can move to the table using table commands or we can uh, tab to the links in the table or press H to go to the headings in the table. Uh, and each heading level three in the comparison table represents another variable in the data set. Uh, let's compare product or see see what is offered to compare product against sales. So I'll press H. Region heading level three link. Product heading level three link. All right, great. So there's product, and now I'll just press tab from here. Variable colon task graphics accelerator dash Google Chrome. Bullet link box plot showing sales by product. There's a box plot that shows sales by product. Product comparison against other variables. Column 203. Bar chart showing total sales by product link. Total sales by product. That some seems like we might want to do. So we might want to look at that so we know how our various product lines are performing. So I'll just press return. Enter. Untitled dash Google Chrome. Men's casual dollar seven million nine hundred thirty-three thousand seven hundred seven. Men's casual dollar seven million nine hundred thirty-three thousand seven hundred seven. Okay. Now we're back in the graph view. We've seen the support uh, with the histogram a few minutes ago. It's all the same commands work the same way for bar charts. So I'll just press V to go to scan mode. V scan mode. All right. And now I'll just press my right arrow once to scan the entire graph really quickly. Okay. So we can tell, play it again. Okay, all those bars are descending in height. And what that means is this graph has obviously been ordered where the largest bar is on the left-hand side and it's ordered from largest bar to smallest bar. So let's press V to go to explore mode. V, explore mode. And press control left arrow. Land, men's casual, to go all the way over to the left. And now we can walk through and hear each individual point. Women's dress, dollar six million two hundred twenty-six thousand four hundred seventy-five. So men's casual and women's dress are our best-selling product lines globally. Alert, Sarah Larkin has left the meeting. Men's dress, dollar five million five hundred seven thousand two hundred forty-three. Okay, we can keep going and look at each individual one. Now, what are the commands that we use to explore graphs in GraphView? We find those commands by pressing H here. Uh, when we're interacting with the graph, or you can also Alert, click, click, the state, the you can click the help button there at the bottom. Alert, Linda Robin. So let's press H. H. Help dash Google Chrome. Help dash Google Chrome. Table with two columns and ten rows. Page has one heading and no links. Help heading level one. Help table with two column columns. Here's the help page. Right at the top. Help heading level one. All right, and there's a couple of tables here that will allow you to uh, just refresh your memory if you need to, or learn the commands that you use to interact with with graphs in the graph view. All right, so we'll just close that. Control W. All right, and uh, well, now let's close the graph view. Control W, variable colon task graphics accelerator dash Google Chrome product. And let's close the variable page here for the product. Control W, table colon task graphics. Now we're back on the table page. Now, uh, as it turns out, um, we might be interested in a particular subset of this data. Alert, Cindy Patchell. And uh, I think uh, let's Alert, let's uh, take a look at a subset of the region. Currency button, row link sales, row one. Link number of stores, column four. Link subsidiary, column three. Link product, column two. Link region, column one. Okay, so uh, my virtual PC cursor now is in the top left cell uh, on region. I'm going to go down to the second row of the first column. Character, categorical button, row two. Okay, that's a button, and it says character categorical because region is a categorical variable. And uh, oh, it's character type, and it is also categorical. So let me just press that button. I'll press return. Enter. Column properties dialog. Column label colon edit. That brings up the column properties dialog. And on this dialog, this is where I can set a variety of attributes of my columns. So I'll just tab through this. I can change the name of the column. Column type colon list box, character 106. I can choose its type. Table colon task graphics accelerator dash Google Chrome. Note colon 395 or 395 rows match the selected type. All right, and we get a little bit of uh, feedback here about how many, if I do change the type, uh, how many rows, uh, cells within the column actually match the selected type. So for example, if I change the type of this variable to number, I doubt we would have any matches. This column contains categorical data. Checkbox checked. Okay, it does contain categorical data. Filter type colon list box, none, one of six. And I can filter it. Yeah, let's filter this 
uh, this the table by this variable. Starts with two of six. Contains three of six. I'm choosing how we want to filter it. Ends with four of six. Down arrow. Category five of six. We're going to filter by category. Select category colon list box. Now I'm going to go to now select our category we're going to filter by. Select category colon list box. Africa 56, Asia 14, Canada 37, 3 of 10. We're going to filter by Canada. Look, because uh, maybe there's some new initiatives going on in Canada we want to look at. Maybe we're rolling out new product lines. Let's press tab. Filter action colon. Show filter results radio button check. One of two. I can either show the results for Canada or show everything except for Canada. OK button. Now let's press OK. Space. Region column one row two. Character categorical filter button. Showing filter rows 37 of 37. Now. We went from 395 rows in the table just to 37 rows of data in the table. So there's 37 uh, rows with uh, region equals Canada. Okay, now what's nice about this is as I now go off to explore this subset of this filtered subset of the data. Link region, row one. And I'm gonna go back and look, just like we did before, I'll go back over to, to uh, sales and we'll look at sales. Link product, column two. Link subsidiary, column three. Link number of stores, column four. Link sales, column five. There we go. Alert sales. Chastain has left the meeting. Space, untitled, dash Google Chrome, variable, colon, sass, graphics, accelerator, dash Google Chrome, dollar, 80,000, bullet. And now let's see what table, what page we're on. Variable, colon, sales, left, parent, filter, right, parent, heading, level one. We're back on the variable page for sales, and it's now showing filtered data. Do you hear that right there? It says, filtered by heading, level one, variable, colon, sales, left, parent, filtered, right, parent. It's filtered. I'll press down arrow. Filtered by region. Okay. So this is showing data that's been filtered uh, by region, because we filtered it as Canada. Region equals Canada. So now let's let's hit press H a few times and go down and find our bar chart again that we were looking at total sales by product. Summary heading level two. Comparison heading level two. Region heading level three link. Product heading level three link. There we go. And we'll press tab a few times. Box plot showing sales by product link. Variable colon sas graphics. Product comparison against other variables. Column two row three. Bar chart showing total sales by product link. Bar chart showing total sales by product. Hit return. Enter. Untitled dash Google Chrome. Women's dress dollar nine hundred eighty nine thousand three hundred fifty. Ah. Well, it sounds like in Canada, uh, women's dress Alert, left, left, left. is the best-selling product category. And we can play, let's go the next one. Slipper, dollar nine hundred fifty two thousand seven hundred fifty one. For some reason, slippers sell really well in Canada. I'm not sure why that is. Men's dress, dollar nine hundred twenty thousand one hundred one. Right, and men's dress moves from the first position globally down to the third position here in Canada. Right, so this graph and the variable page before it are showing only the filtered data. All right, so let's let's close this Control page. W, variable colon task graph. Let's close the variable page. Control W, table colon task graphics accelerator dash Google. And we're back at the table page, and now I'm going to mute JAWS and let you guys see if anybody has a question that we can answer. Let's, let's maybe take two or three questions so we can keep on track. Let's do a quick time check. 3.34 p.m. 3.34, not bad. I'll press space, speech on demand. All right. And now I've muted Jaws. Lisa, do you want to see if we can? Sure, yes. And just as a reminder to our guests, um, please raise your hand if you have a question. And I will unmute you, and you can ask Ed your question. Yeah. Hey, thanks for that question. Uh, right now, it is not possible to import graphs and, and, and explore them in this way uh, because they don't have the data that is required to, to, to perform, uh, to support the features, to perform the exploration. Now, what I would recommend uh, for the time being is to get uh, the tabular representation of the data in the graph you need to explore, or maybe even the original data set if it's not too big. Um, and it's typically, it's getting more and more common for people who publish graphs to also publish either SDSV or maybe an XLSX format of the data within the graph. And if you can do that, then you can uh, import it into the accelerator and quickly make your own graph and maybe do more interesting things. Uh, and then if you must, uh, I'll show you this in a minute. It's a good segue. As a matter of fact, the third and final way to import data into SAS Graphics Accelerator is to extract data from tables inside of web pages. So as an example, in Wikipedia, it's pretty common uh, for data to be represented as tables. The, the exact same data is represented in a graph. And if the table is formed correctly, you know, there, there's a quote around that correctly, uh, then you can extract data from those tables in web pages and create your own graphs from the data. All right, let's, um, let's take this opportunity to go jump into the next segment, which is a little bit shorter than the previous segment. And uh, 
and import or actually extract data from uh, a table in a web page. And JAWS is not working, so it must be muted. Full speech. There we go. Okay. Wrapping the top table colon tails heading level one. Okay, doke. So we're on the table page. I'll press tab. Table colon task graphics accelerator dash Google Chrome. Return to laboratory button. Okay, Space. Return laboratory colon task graphics accelerator. Okay, for this example, we can actually close the lab. I'll just press control W to close the lab. Control W blank. All right. Now let's go. I have a I have an HTML file just on my file system. I'm going to open that real quick. Downloads. Uh, Meeting controls. Recording dot dot dot. Webinar dash two zero two zero dash three. We Webinar dash two. Sales dot xlsx. This is just a file a, a directory on my file system here in Windows Explorer. Sales dash dash product dot html three four. Sales dot xlsx two four. No. Map dot html one four. No. Sales dot xlsx. Sales dash dash product dot html three four. U.S. dash state dash capitals dot html four four. Ah yes. U.S. state capitals. I'll hit return. Enter. U.S. State Capitals dash Google Chrome table end page has no links. U.S. State Capitals click click. Okay, so this is U.S. State uh, This file is, is just an HTML file that opened in the browser in Chrome, and there's a table that has a bunch of data. Now this is not in the accelerator. This is just a random web page. Table with three columns and fifty two rows. U.S. And it has U.S. State Capitals in it. All right. So I'm going to now press Alt in Chrome. Chrome button menu customize and control Google Chrome. That moves my keyboard focus up to the Chrome toolbar. I'll press left arrow. Add button menu. And left arrow again. Extensions. Open an Acrobat button menu. There's my Acrobat extension. SAS Graphics Accelerator has access to the site button menu. Ah, there's SAS Graphics Accelerator. I'll press space bar to open the pop-up. Space dialog. About button. Page has no links. Pop-up. Extract tables. And I'll press tab. Laboratory button. Oops, let me go shift tab. Extract tables from this page button. There it is. So in the pop-up, there's a button that's called Extract Tables from this page. I'll press Return. Enter. U.S. State Capitals dash Google Chrome. Extensions. SAS Graphics Accelerator has access to the site button menu. Prepare Table dash Google Chrome. Prepare Table. Page has one repair. Okay. Here we are. We're back at the Prepare Table page. So regardless of the source from which you import or extract data from, you'll always go through the Prepare Table page so that you can do things like change the name of the table. So for example, I'll press E. Table name colon star edit required. U.S. State Capitals. Okay. And we try to give you a reasonable name based on the data that you brought in. Um, yeah, but let's just skip down. I'll just press F a couple times in JAWS here. First row contains column headers checkbox checked. Yeah. First column contains row headers checkbox not checked. Yeah. Show full table button. Save the laboratory button. And I'll press the save the laboratory button. This is on the prepare table page. Space prepare table dash Google Chrome. Save the laboratory button. Table colon dash graphics accelerator dash Google Chrome. Save the laboratory button. Showing rows 25 or 51. Page has one read table colon. All right, now let's press H. Table colon, U.S. State Capitals, heading level one. Table colon, U.S. State Capitals. That When I hear table colon for the H1, that means I'm on the table page. All right. So now we have uh, a table data. Let's go look at it. I'll press T. Table with three columns and 28 rows. Showing rows 25 or 51. Column one, row one. Link. Okay, and let's see. Link name, row one. Name is the first column. Uh, I'll go to the right one cell. I'm in the first row. Link latitude, column two. Latitude. Link longitude, column three. And longitude. And the row. All right, let's go then down to the first cell in the second row. Character button. Okay, so name. Latitude name, character button, column one. Name is character type. Latitude, latitude button, column two. Latitude has been automatically typed to latitude. And longitude, one more. Longitude, longitude button, column three. The, 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 the column with the heading of longitude has been automatically typed to longitude as well. So what's going on here is when you import data into SAS Graphs Accelerator, it, it, we use, or the, the accelerator uses heuristics to try to figure out what the types are. Sometimes it's it's wrong. There's not, you know, the data, we can't figure it out deterministically from the data. So you can always click on one of these buttons to go uh, manually assign the type, as we saw earlier in the column properties dialog. But in this case, uh, the heuristic uh, appears to have typed things correctly. And so what's represented in this table? For each capital within the United States, for each state capital, uh, there's the name of the capital and its geographic position in latitude and longitude. Yippee. Okay, so now one thing I haven't showed you is how to manually create charts and graphs. So let me press H. Wrapping the top, table colon US state capitals heading level. To go back to the top, and I'll just press uh, tab a few times. Return to laboratory button. Turn to lab. Download button. I can download the table. Table properties button. Change the table properties. Create graph button. I can create a graph manually. Create map button. Or I can create a map manually. I'll press return. Enter. Create map dash Google Chrome. Create map page has one region, one heading and three links. Create create. So this brings up the create map page. I'll press H1. Create map heading level one. Okay, create map. So heading level one. All right. Now let me just move to the form fields here by pressing F. Cancel button. Well, uh, latitude colon list box item. Latitude one to one. 
Okay, and, and if latitude is pre-chosen here? Longitude, colon, list, box item, longitude, one to one. Is pre-chosen as well? Yeah. Label, colon, list, box item, left parent, and right parent, one of two. Okay, label has not been pre-chosen for me or pre-filled for me. Enter, label, colon, list, box required, left parent, and right parent, one of two, name, two of two. I'll choose name. I'll press tab. Title, colon, edit, map showing name. And let's say uh, map, map showing, showing state, state. capit, I, T, T, capitals. Footnote, colon, edit. I can add a footnote if I choose. Submit button. And I just press tab over to submit and hit return. Enter. Table colon dash graphics accelerator dash Google Chrome. Edit map showing state capitals. Submit edit to map showing map. Okay, so now let's press H1. Wrapping the top. Table colon US state capitals heading level one. Okay, back on the table page. And after I manually create graphs or maps, they show up as a list at the top of this page. I'll press L. List of one items. Okay, and there's one here, as we would expect. I'll press I to go to the to the item. Link map showing state capitals. Alert. Susan's iPad left there to right. Map showing state capitals. All right, so we have a link that will open this map. Let me press it. Enter. Graph view colon task graphics accelerator dash Google Chrome. Map view colon task graphics accelerator dash Google Chrome. Links. And it opens in the map view. Okay. Now, this is where we diverge. So we have two views right now. Graph view and map view. Graph view, graph view shows you graphs and charts Alert. using a Cartesian plane. Okay, and we saw earlier that the y-axis... Uh, is represented using pitch, and if you could hear it, you would you have heard the x axis is, is represented using uh, the pan between your left and your right speakers. What you're exploring here on the map view is you're actually exploring a spherical model of Earth and points on the Earth. And what you might see, if you can see it, in the center is a what we call the lens and the lens shows you a portion of the Earth, uh, and your, the lens is located, uh, the center of the lens is your virtual location. So let's, let's manually assign our virtual location. J, jump modal dialog, search colon edit, 51 results. By pressing J, I can jump to a particular point on the map, and I'm going to type Raleigh, because I'm in Raleigh. Lee, Raleigh, North Carolina. Right now. now. I'll press return. Enter, moving to Raleigh, North Carolina, showing 51 of 51 objects. So now, my virtual position, I'm virtually standing in Raleigh, North Carolina right now. And let me just, um, since there's so many points, let me just zoom in a little bit. I'll press the plus up by the backspace. I'll press plus. Equals 2,500 miles, showing 49 of 51 objects. All right, let's zoom in again by pressing plus. Equals 1,000 miles, showing 33 of 51 objects. Okay, and maybe again. Equals 500 miles, showing 16 of 51 objects. Okay, and maybe one more time. Equals 250 miles, showing 5 of 51 objects. All right, five, that's pretty good. So now, I've moved my virtual position to Raleigh. I've zoomed in uh, to 500 miles, which is, by the way, going to show me five other capitals. And now, there's a couple ways I can explore the map. Uh, I can press my page down or page up to use a virtual cane. I can swing a virtual cane in 360 degrees around me. And here are the points out there. So let me press it once. Page down, Raleigh, North Carolina, you are here. Okay, I'm here in Raleigh. Let me press page down again. Page down, Washington, D.C., 234 miles at 1 o'clock. Okay, Washington, D.C., 234 miles at 1 o'clock. Now let me play that again. Space, Washington, D.C., 234 miles at 1 o'clock. We tell Jaws not to repeat echo there. Both characters and words, none. Okay, just so you can, I'll, I'll press space bar. Washington, D.C., 234 miles at 1 o'clock. You should be able to hear a very low tone. That low tone means it's far away. Pitch, in this case, means how far away is the point from my virtual location. So the points that are near to me have a high pitch and the points that are far away near the edge of my lens have a low, a low tone. Press page down again to go to the next one going clockwise. Richmond, Virginia, 139 miles at one o'clock. Okay, Richmond, it's 139 miles versus 237 miles for Washington DC. So it's, there's a higher tone there. I'll play that again. Richmond, Virginia, 139 miles at one o'clock. Right, let's keep going around. Columbia, South Carolina, 183 miles at eight o'clock. Now I could hear that went mostly to my left ear because Columbia is down southeast of Raleigh. Okay, let's do it again. Columbia, South Carolina, 183 miles at 8 o'clock. Yeah, 183 miles at 8 o'clock, which is pretty much southwest. And then we'll keep going. Charleston, West Virginia, 243 miles at 11 o'clock. Okay, Charleston is way out there. Okay. Now let's, um, let's zoom out one by pressing the minus key up near the backspace. 500 miles, showing 16 of 51 objects. 16, okay. So now, the other way that you can explore, the, the much more effective way to explore a map, is using an Xbox controller. And we're going to dive into this a lot more in our next webinar on May 21st. But I've got an Xbox controller in my hand, 
It has little thumbsticks that rotate around in 360 degrees. They're physical. And I'm going to rotate it right now. And if you're sighted, you can probably see my virtual cane swing around on the screen. Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, 326 miles at 1 o'clock. Washington, D.C., 234 miles at 1 o'clock. Okay. Annapolis, Maryland, 251 miles at 1 o'clock. Richmond, Virginia, 139 miles at 1 o'clock. I'm going to swing it around in 360 Angela, degrees. Christian, raise hand. Trenton, news alert. Angela Christian raised hand. Dover, Delaware, 290 miles alert. Two participants raised hand. Columbus, Ohio, 307 alert. Two participants raised hand. Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, 326 miles at 1 o'clock. Okay. Now, uh, I want to just kind of em emphasize the point here that I am feeling, if you're seeing that little virtual cane wag waggle around down there towards the southeast, I'm, feel I'm doing that with my thumb, and I feel it physically. Like I'm physically controlling it. Not with a keyboard but with an Xbox controller. And, um, and uh, also, I get a vibration right there at south, and I get a vibration at east. And if I swung around to north and west, I would also get a vibration. I can feel the vibration in my hand within the controller that indicates north, east, south, and west, right? So with that, I can quickly... Tallahassee, Florida, 492 miles at 7 o'clock. Dover, Delaware, 290 miles at 1 o'clock. I can quickly tell you that, oh, there's nothing to the south and the east of Raleigh, whereas there's a bunch of points if I swing around. Dover, Delaware, 290 miles at 1 o'clock. Tallahassee, Florida, 492 miles at 7 o'clock. Okay. Uh, I saw several hands that got raised. We're probably coming up on time. And before we actually take a few questions, Lisa, let me mute Jaws. Uh, Speech on demand. And, um, and just emphasize or just say that you know we'll dive a lot deeper into this on maps during our next webinar on May 21st. Um, and I'll send out, with the recording of this webinar, I'll send out a link for registration for the next webinar that will focus 100% on maps. Uh, with that, let's take a few questions. Okay, great, exciting stuff. I always love to see this demoed. Great. Uh, let me take the second one first. Thank you for the question, Angela. Um, so uh, my Xbox controller right now is connected via a USB cable because it um, it just charges on its own. I prefer that. But you can also connect them via Bluetooth if you choose. And I'm running Windows 10. And it, it's just plug and play. It works wonderfully. Uh, we've primarily tested with tested with Xbox controllers because they have such great compatibility with Windows. Uh, we have also tested with one very cheap $8 off-the-shelf gamepad. Uh, it worked as well. Uh, but, of course, it's, it's nowhere near the quality of an Xbox controller. Um, so, it, you know, the, the UX just wasn't quite as good. So I would expect that any gamepad, uh, quote unquote any, right, uh, would work if you can connect it to your Windows 10 system. Now, I know there are probably some out there that will not work because of compatibilities and whatnot. So give it a try. If you've got one, connect it to a Windows 10 machine, install SAS Graphics Accelerator. You can find a few maps if you go to our SAS Disability Support Center and then click on the COVID-19 by the numbers sample reports. We have a bunch of samples up on, on, our, on the Disability Support Center. There are a few maps, one of which shows county level data for the United States that shows confirmed cases of the coronavirus, uh, deaths, and death rate by county for the, for the entire country, as well as all the other uh, countries globally. There's a few countries that, that, that are exposing uh, state and province level data. Most of them are just for the country. So you can see provinces in China, uh, provinces in Canada, in Europe, it's mostly state level data. But anyway, there's a few uh, maps there for you to play with if you want to go play with them right now on the SAS Disability Sports Center. Uh, pitch is hardwired where high pitch is close to you and uh, towards the end of, of your virtual cane within the lens is your low pitches. Uh, we could certainly consider uh, making that an option. If you'd like to, if you would, um, send me an email at uh, accessibility at sas.com. Give me a little more information about your use case and uh, you know who you are and what kind of data you're working with. Uh, I'd love to hear about that and we might be able to consider that. Thank you for that suggestion. Ed, can you take another question? We have about five minutes left. Let's do one more. Yeah, one more. Go ahead if you have a question for Ed, please. Uh, so I, if either graph view or map view, if you press H, which I'll do that right now, and you can't hear anything because Jaws is off. Full speech. There we go. Um, 
Let's see. Build on map setting level one. Yeah. So if you press H in either graph view or map view, then you can get um, help for all of your keyboard commands that are there now. And when you uh, control W, when you have focus, then map view, task, graphics, accelerate. in in a graph or a map, that's when you can use all your keyboard commands. And thank you for asking that question, Bob, because um, or Robert, Alert, because two participants uh, Alert, two participants let me just, just turn on the man. Uh, there we go. Because I wanted to mention, I failed to mention that in graph view and map view, this interaction is designed so that your left hand is resting on the home keys, A, D, S, F, and your right hand is resting on your arrow keys. Uh, and that's pretty much how it works. So with your right hand using arrow keys, page up, page down, that kind of thing, you're issuing commands to explore the data. With your left hand, uh, you're, you can press lots of commands that allow you to change the speech, the sound. Um, if it's group data, you can you can change group. Um, you can change the statistic, perhaps. There's, there's lots of different settings depending on the graph or the map uh, that you can kind of quickly change with your left hand. And uh, and that's how it works really, really efficiently. So uh, hopefully that answered your question, Robert. If not, uh, raise your hand again and we'll try to get to it. Ed, I Hello. know we're so close to time. I wonder if we have t um, time for one more question. That's a great question. Thank you for that question, Robert. Uh, right now, the limit is a megabyte, one megabyte of data. So what I do, if I need to, I will either in some other program, and typically I'll do it using code and SAS in the SAS programming language or, or JavaScript or something like that. And sometimes I'll do it in Excel. Uh, I will reduce the data and sample it in some way uh, before I bring it into SAS Graphics Accelerator. If you have a use case where you need bigger data, um, granted, th this is a this, this is a browser extension. It's written in JavaScript. It runs completely in the browser. It's not connecting to any backend. Okay, but if yeah. you have if you have a, a need for bigger data, if you would send us email to accessibility at sas.com and give us some more information about what you're doing and what kind of data you have. Um, we can add that to our, uh, we have a feature right now where we, we want to expand that um, that limit, uh, but we're kind of waiting for user input to help us prioritize that work. So give me a use case and we'd love to consider that for you. That's it, Ed. Okay, okay, great. Well, listen guys, so I wanted to just thank you all for, for joining us here. Um, it's a pleasure to have you here. Great questions. Thank you so much. Our next webinar will focus on maps and it will be on May 21st at three o'clock. Next week, we'll get up the recording of this webinar along with the registration for the next webinar on May 21st. Uh, I'll send you, if you're registered, if you register for this one, I'll send you one more email and it will include both a link to the recording of this one and the link to register for the next one uh, if you're able to join us please, uh, please do join us if you can. And in the meantime, uh, send us any feedback, questions, comments, uh, send it to us at accessibility at sas.com. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much for joining us.